So welcome to the Lux experiment. We're about a mile underground in the Sanford Underground Research Facility in Leeds, South Dakota. And standing right behind me here is a large steel, it's an eight meter diameter steel water tank, 74,000 gallons of water in there. And in the middle of that tank is the lowest radioactivity place uh, for low energy events in the world. So water we can make extremely low in radioactivity and the Lux experiment needs that very low radioactivity, that low background, so that it can count single events possibly due to dark matter particles. So dark matter particles are all around us. Dark matter is very well understood to be omnipresent in the galaxy, in the universe. 85% of the matter in the universe is actually dark matter, not ordinary matter like neutrons and protons and all the elements you read about in chemistry. All that stuff is only you know 15% of the matter of the universe. The other 85% is virtually not understood. It's known to be there from its gravitational effects from the early universe from the way that galaxy clusters interact, how galaxies um, interact with each other, and how stars move around galaxies, and from the cosmic microwave background, the, uh, the fingerprints from the Big Bang. We know there's all this dark matter out there, but we don't know its intrinsic nature. What kinds of other particles can it interact with, exactly how the mass of the particles individually, we don't know. Um, and there are a number of theories for, uh, for dark matter and how it interacts. The Lux experiment, which is in the middle of this water tank, tests a hypothesis known as weakly interacting massive particles. Weakly interacting massive particles are WIMPs for short. Okay, and this is the idea that you could have a particle that very, very rarely interacts with ordinary matter. It does interact once in a while, and that's how it's produced in the early universe. But these days, it only interacts very rarely. Uh, there's a kind of particle we already know exists that were detected from the sun for the very first time in this very cavern. Those particles are called neutrinos. It was proven that the sun shines by fusion, by turning hydrogen into helium. That was proven right here in this cavern by Ray Davis and collaborators using an enormous tank of cleaning fluid. The neutrinos could come in and interact with the chlorine atoms, turn into argon, radioactive argon atoms to be counted. So this tank, this cavern had a big tank of a funny fluid, you know, a cleaning fluid, and uh, these days we've got a tank of an entirely different liquid, liquid xenon, in the middle of the, what we call the Davis cavern. So neutrinos are emitted by the sun in huge quantities. There's about 60 billion per second going through your thumbnail if you point it up to the sun. We, Physicists detect neutrinos all the time. They come out of the sun, they come out of nuclear reactors, they come out of natural radioactivity in the rock all around us. They're ubiquitous, they're everywhere. And the idea is that dark matter particles could be something very much like neutrinos, but heavier. Neutrinos are very light, they have very little mass. But dark matter particles, in order to have the properties that allow galaxies to form, for uh, the plumping that's really necessary to form the universe as we know it, you have to have this dark matter. So what we're doing is, with the Lux detector, is looking for the very rare events where a dark matter particle could scatter from a xenon nucleus. Xenon's a pretty big atom, it's a rare gas, it's a, or a noble gas. It's present in the atmosphere at about one part in 10 million. And you can buy xenon, you can call people up, buy a bottle of xenon, and we've got about 370 kilograms of liquid xenon inside the Lux detector behind me in that water tank. The central part of the, of the xenon, uh, the Lux detector, again, it's liquid xenon. It's surrounded by uh, very sensitive light detectors called photomultiplier tubes. And liquid xenon makes a flash of light if something scatters in it. And it can also release charge, electrons, which we can also detect. Lux is designed to detect you know, a few photons at a time, light particles, or a few electrons at a time, one electron at a time. It's extremely sensitive. 
to very small energy depositions that would, you would get if a dark matter particle bumps into a xenon nucleus. So it's very low radioactivity. We see these very rare events, something like one event per month in the, liquid, in the, in the detector that we're looking for. Uh, and again, it's very sensitive. Dark matter can have a variety of masses. It might be the mass of a proton, it might be 10,000 times the mass of a proton, or anywhere in between. A large range of possible masses for the particle. Also a large range of possible interaction probabilities that that particle could scatter with ordinary matter. And we've tested across the range of masses to a degree of sensitivity unmatched by any, any other uh, experiment thus far in the world. So this is world-class science right here in, uh, in Leeds, South Dakota.